so today for my lightning talk, I'm going to talk about graphs and charts in Vue.js. Yesterday when I talked about it, I talked about what we're doing with our factory core framework application that we're creating for our end, um, factories worldwide. Stanley has 115 factories, and I'm going to give you some backgrounds on how they currently do things, because yesterday I mentioned that we were tasked in this calendar year to save $300 million for Stanley Black & Decker. And this is how we're doing it. Currently in a factory, they have the production line. Some of the smaller factories might have five lines. Our biggest factory has 20 lines. The way that it works is an operator will be manning a line. It will be producing a product. It may produce multiple products during a shift. At the end of the operator's shift, we run three shifts a day. The operator will take a piece of form, a piece of paper that has a form on it, and he'll put in today's date, his name, the line that he was currently working on, the work order that he did, the SKUs that he produced, and he'll put in how many items he produced, how many he rejects that he had, and if he wanted to put any comments in, he can put that in. The shift supervisors will go out and collect each one of these pieces of papers from all the line operators, and then at the end of the day, these are passed on to the plant manager. So the plant manager will get these piece of documents from every operator for all three shifts for every line that they have in the factory. And the plant manager will sit down and like a day or two days later will look at that and he might only then realize that, for example, line two was producing defects at a 50% run rate. So of all the things that they've produced on that line through three shifts for three days have to be completely trashed. So this is an expense that the, the factory has incurred, and what we're doing with our factory core framework has helped them out. So when an operator comes in, this is what they're going to see as part of our factory core framework. They have a tablet that's right there next to their station on their line, and they can look at it, and they will able to see graphs like this. And by default, the graph will come in and show them the current shift that they're currently working on, and it will tell them, for example, in the first hour of this shift, so this is a graph showing the first five hours of this person's shift, they were clearly above what they were expected to produce for that hour, therefore the graph is green. For the other four hours, the bar chart is red because it's below the estimate that they were expected to produce for that hour. So they can easily see where they stand in, in their production levels instead of waiting you know, three days later and here they can see they're behind and they need to make an adjustment on it. And if the operator wants to go in and look at the details a little bit more, he can always come in and look at not just his current shift, he can look at all the production on his line, for example, the past hour. He can look at it for everything that's been happening for the current day, or if he wants, he can go in and look at it from a different time frame. Outside of the operators, we also have specialists, and the specialists are responsible for overseeing a couple of lines in the factory. And the specialists can get, actually see more details because they're responsible for multiple lines. And they can look at all the machines that they're responsible for to see if they're up, if they're producing rejects. They can look at the Pareto for those lines themselves. They can look at the daily OEE trends gives them an idea of what's going on, and once they select a report, they're actually able to go down and drill down a little bit more detail where they can say, give me the details for a specific line because they're responsible for multiple lines, or tell me exactly you know, what shift that is going on on that line, or the specific skew that's going on down there. So for example, the def default um, report on uh, downtimes by machine. Here it is, it shows you all the downtimes for all the machines there. And then he can dry, uh, drill down and he goes, all right, let me just see the details for one specific machine. And in this case, it's the brushless compact drill too. And then if he wants to see what were causing the problems, he can drill down and look at the Pacific SKU, which are the actual products that they're creating on that line at that time. And they can see that detail. So what I want to talk about is how we actually go about and create these graphs and these charts and so forth. What we're using is we're using eCharts, which is like an industry standard for creating graphs and charts, and we're using View eCharts, 
which is just a wrapper around eCharts so that you can be able to use it within a view application. To get going with um, being able to use view eCharts, it's a plugin, and so here is our plugin file on how we actually import it in. So we basically import view eCharts in. We can import just the particular charts that we're using. And in our application, we only produce bar charts and we only do line charts. There are many more different types of charts that, that eCharts provides, but these are the only ones that we're using. And we're also are pulling in tooltips and we're pulling in a legend so we can see what's going on. And at the very bottom, we create a component that we call chart, and that's what we can use in all of our components in our application to display a graph to a user. And then and the last thing that we need to do is in our main.js is that we go in and import that plugin file that we just created. So now what I wanna do is do a demo. So now everything should be mirrored so you can see what I'm seeing. And in here what we have is, zoom this up a little bit. Here is our package.json in this application and I'll have this in my GitHub repo so you can look at it. And in here I've imported in eCharts and view eCharts that we have it. Here's the plugin file that I showed you earlier where it has the items that we're importing in. And then in the main.js file, we actually have where I'm importing in that plugin file. Unfortunately, I can't because I have mine set for a certain font size because I have bad vision and I don't have it where I can adjust it. But you can get it out of my GitHub repo and you'll be able to see it more clearly from there. In the file itself, what we have is we have this chart option which is what we called it when we imported in from the plugin. And that chart will basically take in a prop, which are all the, the options that you're going to use to be able to display for the chart itself. And what we've done is we've actually created a custom component to wrap around the chart. And we actually call this chart graph. And the reason why is we provide certain functionality that when you click on a graph, something else might be displayed to the user. So we need to be able to pick out that, pull out that click information. So we have it. Now in here, I have a basic application and let me drop over to my application. And what I've done is I created this very simple demonstration application that you have. And when you click on the bar, this will actually show you a very simple bar chart that you can use by, by passing in information into the, the chart itself. You can go a step further and provide, for example, a bar chart with a legend. And at the very top, you can see here that we produced a legend that's called production count. So I know exactly what I'm displaying there. And the other thing I can do is I can do a bar chart with the tooltip. And when I hover over one of these lines, it will actually tell me this is the date that that's being represented by this bar chart and the production count for it was exactly 817 items. So that gives you a very quick overview of what we're doing with um, graphs and charts within um, view itself. And let me get back over here. My last slide is this is my GitHub repo, so you will have information from my talk yesterday, as well as my talk today with the sample application for you to be able to put out there. And I added something on here because I've looked at what other speakers are saying. Um, I write frequently um, about a lot of things about programming, but recently I've been writing a lot about Vue.js. And I write on my blog, but I also post all of my articles on medium.com. So how many of you are familiar or have read articles on medium.com? A few months ago when I started writing, I was like the 17th most read writer in terms of the, the tag view. Currently I'm number three. So if you could please go out, read my articles and, and click on it because my goal is I want to jump the number two writer, the two most read writer who happens to have a name of Evan. So if you want to, 
help me out. You know, feel free to go out and read my articles and, and, and so I can jump from number three to number two. So, but thank you very much for listening.